what does Justin Bieber, Gwyneth Paltrow, and some of the biggest names in sports have in common with me? Well, find out by tuning in to this episode of Digging In with Dr. Kellyanne. Breath work can help with so many things like lowering your blood pressure, lowering your heart rate. It can help with anxiety and deep depression. It can help elevate mood. It can help with symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. It can help you sleep. Breathwork can also improve brain function. It's so easy to fall into that habit of how do I calm down at night? Then how, do, how much caffeine do I need to pump me up in the morning? And wouldn't it be nice to have something that's so natural and free and doesn't take long to do the same thing? And it's not me saying this, it's science. Science is telling us that we can use the power of our breath to pull back in and to calm down our, our mind and our body. Today we're talking with Emily Fletcher of Ziva Meditation. She is the queen of breath work. You're gonna love her. Emily, I am so glad to be here in your beautiful studio, finally, after all this time, yes. and talking about something that I certainly need to learn more about, so do so many people watching. And that is this whole idea of breath work. And it sounds so crazy that we're actually talking about something called breath work when we breathe <laughs> and have breathed since we were born. Yeah. So this whole idea of like, how, why do we even need to study breath work was kind of crazy to me, but so many people are getting results. So let's just like break it down from the beginning. What the heck is breath work? <laughs> so you're right. It's like we're breathing all day, every day without thinking about it, with no classes, with no training, with no science. You're breathing right now. I'm breathing right now. We're also thinking right now. And yet there's infinite amount of books on mindset, positive mindset, personal growth. And so just like you're thinking all day, every day, whether you're concentrating on it or not, you're all we're breathing all day, every day. And both of these things, our thoughts and our breath are autonomic mm. and we can get our hands on the wheel of them. So as you start to consciously shift your breath, you can actually start to consciously shift your thoughts. Like you just took a big deep breath right now. And when we started talking about it, you went in, your body naturally exhaled and you elongated the exhale. And when we do that, we soften and strengthen something called the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve, as you know, is the super highway between the brain and body. It is the thing that is connecting from our gut to our head, our head to our gut, and fear affects the diaphragm first. And since we're all living in a lot of stress right now, when we can get our hands on the wheel of our breath and change it, we can calm down, get out of that fight or flight, calm down the vagus nerve and get into what I call stay and play. And I love this. And I have to say that for people who are watching that are thinking, is this for me? I just want to say that what I found out from practitioners like yourself is that a lot of us actually need this without maybe even being aware of it. Because what I find is that people seem to be breathing too shallow yes. they're breathing too fast they have their inhale and exhale on the right on the wrong rhythm mm. and also if you really examine the lungs where breath happens is that we have five lobes to our lungs on one side we have two lobes on the other side we have three lobes and what's interesting about this is that we can't seem to get air to the very bottom of our lungs yes. so I think everyone should really start to become more aware of how they're breathing. So yeah. breath work is really essential. Yeah, you're right. Because when we get stressed, right, which is this fight or flight, the amygdala takes over in the brain. Our breath naturally gets shallow. You know, fear does affect the diaphragm first, and then it becomes this self-fulfilling prophecy. You're stressed. It changes your breathing. As your breathing gets more shallow, it makes you more stressed. And then we become in this cycle that we can't get out of. So breath work is stopping that fear cycle. It's stopping that stress. Oh cycle and it drops you down. That's why everyone's saying like, breathe into your belly. What does your gut say? Mm. Trust your gut, trust your intuition. Well, how do we get our attention there? By sending our breath there. So when we say fear affects the diaphragm first, when we say breathe into our belly, we're not obviously breathing into our stomachs. But what that means is that we're making space for the diaphragm to drop for the lungs to expand so that we can get to their full capacity. And when we do that, we have more oxygen in our brain, more oxygen in our organs, more oxygen in our blood, and everything starts to work better. 
Oh, and I love this. And I have to say that you and I were talking earlier about like cocktails and cocktail parties and all of this. And I think one of the things that people do is they use a lot of things like alcohol or medications and things like that to get the same effect that you can actually get from proper breathing. Yes. And so I would say for me, if I were to look at my health, you know, on a, on a, on a matrix, I would say for me, the one thing that I have to pay attention to is stress, is anxiety when you have so many things that you're trying to accomplish and do like so many of us. So what I love about this is this is natural medicine that really works. And the science behind this, you cannot negate. No, it's like we are waking up an internal pharmacy that is that we already have access to inside of ourselves. The dopamine, the serotonin oh, love that it. happens when you start oxygenating your body, um, it is it feels like magic. It sometimes even feels like drugs. Like you can in induce different sort of states of consciousness just through your breath, totally sober. And to your point of like people are using cocktails or cigarettes to deal with their stress. When I see people outside doing smoke breaks, I'm like, what if they just went out and breathed? If you went out face to face, eye contact with your friends and took 10 breaths, which is basically what a cigarette is, you would probably feel a lot better than going out and smoking that cigarette. And see, that's what I want people to really realize is the power behind this. Because I, sometimes I think when people see something that's free and people see something that's so easy, they don't put as much relevancy to that practice or to that treatment. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, ancient medicine. This has been around forever. Mm -hmm. and, and, and again, the science, science is showing us that this is so helpful for things like lowering your blood pressure, for anxiety, for stress, for deep depression, for people with post-traumatic stress disorders, it's very helpful for sleep disorders, for mood elevation. So for all these reasons, and again, this is not me saying this, this is actually science showing us by simply controlling your breath. Yeah, or, and I would add to that list, it can improve your performance. Like if you have a big mm -hmm. talk, you're probably gonna be nervous, palms are sweating. <sighs> and actually not through your nose or probably breathe through your mouth it gets really fast and shallow or if you're about to have a date or if you're about to you know get lucky all the good stuff yeah all the good stuff this is actually a great time to rely on breath work right before you take the stage right before you're about to have an adult playtime we if we if we shift our breathing bring it down into our bellies we're so our hearts open our minds open and we feel so much more present and ready for the task at hand and this is, again, and I'll get back a little bit to the science behind this, is that we have a sympathetic and parasympathetic part to our nervous yeah. system. So our sympathetic is fight or flight. That's how we think about that, right? Yeah. So we're activating stress in our body. Anything that that's, you know, when a tiger is chasing you, fight or flight. And then there's wine and dine. <laughs> I call right. it stay and play, stay but I like play. wine and dine too. I like that. <laughs> and basically that's when you, you can relax your body. And when you're in a relaxed state, what I love about this, it actually helps your digestion as yes. well. Yes. So your digestion is, it's, it helps it so much to digest and metabolize food when you can tap in to this parasympathetic part of your nervous system, which is really the, the premise behind breath work. And so I want you to tell everyone, we talk a lot about diaphragmatic breathing and your diaphragm you've mentioned several times. Mm -hmm. Explain to me like where your diaphragm is and how that works. Yes, yeah, so the diaphragm is um, one of the biggest muscles in the body and it goes underneath the lungs and it's almost like, um, like a shelf that our lungs sit on. And it is the diaphragm that controls the expansion of the lungs, that controls the depth of our breathing. And when we're exhaled, the diaphragm, it's almost like, a, uh, like it bows up. But when we inhale and we take a nice deep belly breath, it drops. And then we make spaciousness for our lungs to expand and we can get to all of those lobes that you mentioned. And your voice drops, your thinking can clear, your heart can quite literally open. Like we're creating more spaciousness around the heart. And, and I know that again, the heart is an organ that's pumping blood, but there's a reason why every love song is, <laughs> is written about this thing. Because when this is open, it changes the way that your brain and body talk to each other. It really does calm the brain down. Yeah. Yes. And 
And to your point about fight or flight, yes. so if a tiger's you know, about to attack you, your body is going to go into that sympathetic fight or flight, and then a, a whole host of chemical reactions happen. Your, your digestion floods with acid to shut down digestion because you need all of your energy to fight or flee the tiger. That acid seeps onto our skin so that we don't taste very good if that tiger bites us. That's one of the things that prematurely ages us when we're stressed yes. and not doing breath work. Yes. Our bladder and bowels evacuate. These are like the nervous poos that we get before a date or a big presentation. <laughs> you even make that look gracious. <laughs> you even, uh, unbelievable. <laughs> but everybody gets them, right? Yes. Like I used to be an actress. I used to be on Broadway and you would go into a, <laughs> this is really not classy. You would go into the bathroom before an audition and it'd be like, what are these showgirls eating? <laughs> And it's really because they were stressed and their their body was trying to protect them from the tiger. And it was so like, well, true. let's evacuate. Let's get light on our feet so we can run away from this tiger. Our sex drive goes to the back burner when we're stressed. Our immune system is compromised. So with doing something as simple and to your point, as free as breath work, we can get out of that, oh no, a tiger's coming to get me. Because unfortunately that affects our relationships. We start to think that the tiger is our husband, our mother-in-law, our kids. So when we get out of that state, our relationship with everyone around us starts to shift. You know, it's so interesting because I think about things in analogies and I think about things in algorithms, uh, seeing patients for so many years. So I think about what like, inflammation in the body and yeah. how that affects your body. And sometimes you can't shut off inflammation. And so when you can't shut that off, that's when you have all these modern day diseases that we see. Uh, you know, all kind of autoimmune problems, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, obesity, all connects. The common underpinning is this inflammation. So what's interesting to me about this is it sounds like the same thing is going on with the autonomic nervous system, that our sympathetic driven dominant system can't shut down. That's exactly right. And they're so connected because when you're in that fight or flight, one of the things that's happened is your body is producing adrenaline and cortisol. And those stress hormones are acidic in nature. So they are creating inflammation. And in Ayurvedic medicine, which is an ancient body of knowledge, it. It's, it, it basically says that inflammation is the basis of all chronic disease. And the way to get out of inflammation is to get out of stress, out of this fight or flight. And the cool thing about breath work and meditation is that you're not just getting rid of the adrenaline and cortisol. You're not just changing the acidity, you're actually releasing dopamine and serotonin, which are alkaline in nature. I have to just speak to those really quickly, if I may. Dopamine, serotonin are your feel good hormones. Yes. And that's what I want people to know. Yes. That is the natural drug. That's the drug you get when somebody hugs you or you feel love or you exercise or you eat something that's satisfying. A lot of us, when we are in eating patterns that don't serve us, it's that dopamine hit that we're, we're looking for. Yes. Dopamine is a huge driver of feeling good. Mm -hmm. So again, breath work can key into the dopamine. Yes, and it's actually why we're all addicted to social media. It's that, that it's when, when you learn something new, you get a little hit of dopamine. And so that's why we just scroll and scroll because it's something new, something new. And it's just this constant drip of dopamine. And so if you find yourself in a doom scroll on Instagram, <laughs> what you can do is you can stop feel your feet on the ground and do the simplest, simplest exercise. I call it the two X breath, where you inhale through the nose for two and you exhale through your mouth for four. It's ridiculously simple. And just that, just four breaths. <sighs> can get you out of that. Just, I'm, I've been doing this for 10 minutes. It's hurting my eyes. It's hurting my brain. It's making me feel stressed and I can't stop. Put it down, four breaths. Right? We can't move away from the negative. It's much easier to move towards the positive. So instead of saying, get off my phone, instead of saying, oh, let me try a few of those 2x breaths that Emily and Kellyanne were talking about. And you know, one of the things that I love, and, and you know this based on my work, is anything that has an ancient uh, uh, through line. And what I love so much about this is this has been around forever. Yes, so okay. how is this different than yoga then? Oh, great question. Yeah. So yoga is actually a Sanskrit word that means union. And what are we unioning? We're unioning our individuality with totality. We're actually unioning mm -hmm. our left brain and our right brain, which again is individuality and totality. Like here's my ego, here's my guidance. And when we start to do things like breath work and yoga, we merge them. We increase the size of something called the corpus callosum, which is the bridge between the right and left hemispheres of the brain. And the cool thing is that the thicker that bridge is, the more we can be in our full individual expression, our full, you know, I'm on stage and rocking it, 
and I'm receiving that intuition, that intuition. I'm receiving that divine guidance in real time. So that's why we do things like Qigong, yoga, breath work. So yoga means union, right? And yoga, as we call it in the West, is really an asana practice. And asana are the poses that we do in yoga. And the cool thing about yoga is it was actually designed to be a preparation for meditation. All of the asanas are actually just leading you to shivasana, which means corpse pose. And you're practicing dying when you're in that, which I know sounds terrifying, but really all of our fears go back to the fear of death. And if you can look death in the face every single day, mm. everything else gets easier. Oh, that tough conversation I have to have with my ex. Who cares? I already faced death this morning. <laughs> oh, I'm going to ask for a raise at my job today. Who cares? I already died today. <laughs> <laughs> I love the whole who cares thing. Yeah. Can we start a who cares movement? Yeah, who cares? I mean, who cares? <laughs> if we could just be in that, yes. how easy would every hard conversation, because what we're really talking about with breath, with everything, it's about life force. And life force is all about evolution, elevating. It's about self-actualization. Yes. So if we can kind of get have that attitude in our breath and in our awareness and in our bodies, and really develop that who care, who cares? Just think about the growth because that's what we're all trying to do here. Yeah, and it's not a mean who cares. It's not like, well, I'm gonna do something mean because no. who cares, it's, it's detachment. And I actually made a t-shirt and it says, detachment is sexy, neediness is not. And, and that fear, that Gosh. thing that keeps us from speaking our truth, asking for the raise, asking the person on a date, performing at the top of our game is that neediness, that playing small. It's the belief that somehow this person, place or thing has the power to make me. And it's a repellent. Yes, it's, it's a, a repellent because neediness is not sexy. But if you're doing breath work, if you're doing yoga, if you're doing meditation, you are accessing that dopamine and serotonin internally. You are accessing your fulfillment in the only place that it resides, which is inside of you. And that is what creates detachment. And then everyone can't date you fast enough, hire you fast enough. That's really interesting. So is breath work then meditation? Ah, uh, so I have a lot I could say on this, but I'm gonna try and keep it simple. The way that I use breath work and certainly at Ziva is that we use breath work as the appetizer. We use breath work as the warm up. Mm -hmm. This is the thing that's preparing you for the main course of meditation. And it's great because breath work, I consider more of the mindfulness category and mindfulness is really good at dealing with your stress in the now. It's creating a state change. Whereas the meditation that I teach at Ziva is all about a trait change. It's all about oh. healing you on a cellular level and it's getting of stress from your past. So funny you said that because one of the things that I love so much is cellular health and I do a lot of focus on cellular health. So breath work actually enhances cellular activity, right? Yes, and you're actually bringing oxygen, more oxygen to your cells. So it, it, it's cool because if you do breath work every day, yes, it will start to work on the stress from the past, but really why people love breath work is because it's so instantaneous. It's like, I'm feeling stressed, I'm feeling overwhelmed. I can do three minutes, five minutes of breath work and feel significantly better in the now. Whereas meditation is, basically full-blown magic, but it's a slower process and it's healing you on a cellular level. It's healing all that stress we've been storing in our cellular memory. Okay, I love this. I love this conversation because I think it's so needed. This is one of my core questions in life. How do you be a tiger? I'm a tiger. You're a tiger. We're a tiger in life. You know what it means, right? <laughs> so how do you be a tiger and still let go. If you're writing your next book, if you're going after, you know, a big thing and you're like, I want to change the world, then great. You know, when it's go time, but you realize that the resting is just as important as the hustle and you're not doing it from a place of ego and you're not doing it from a place of ego, right? You're doing this because you really want people's lives to be better. Mm. I'm doing this because I want people's lives to be better. And when we get stressed is when we make it about us. I don't know if I'm going to make the New York Times. I don't know if, if my TV segment looks good versus what's the ripple effect of this. If one person reads this book and their life is improved, great. I've done my job. I hope everyone just heard that because I this is such a main principle that's missing. It's an element that's missing in career driven people who end up, and I have to circle this back to breath work, that we have that choppy breath. Yeah. Because when we get into that state of ego or worrying about having the circle back to us, that's when our breath gets choppy. Yes. 
and our life gets choppy and everything yes. gets choppy. And if you think about it, if you're, I mean, you're a speaker, if you're about to take the stage, when we get nervous, that, that breath gets shallow, it's usually because like, how am I gonna do? Are they gonna like me? And that's a very ancient response as well. But most people's fear of public speaking is greater than their fear of death because back in the day, if you were to perform poorly in your tribe or say something that made the tribe upset, they would kick you out of the tribe <laughs> and you would die. Yes. So poor public performance actually in our ancient brain equals death. And so because we've all sort of think that we're never going to die, we have the immortality complex, but I'm about to take the stage right now, this fear feels more imminent than the fear of death. And so, and again, that becomes, we make it about us. But if we can stop, do some breath work, do some meditation and say, what do I want to communicate to the people in the room? What do I want the people listening to this podcast to receive? And you make it about them and then you become a channel then you're opening up your channels for creativity, collective intelligence to flow through you. Mm, that's, I, how, that's how you get to flow state. Okay, so that's how you become a tiger. I love how, I love how meditation, breath work, all of that is really hitting the mainstream. And that book, Breath, that hit the New York Times list, that was a big, you know, big moment of saying people really want this. Yeah. Now, I know that there's someone by the name of Wim Hof who's become pretty popularized. He kind of bangs into your sympathetic nervous system where you take the opposite approach. But I guess that his philosophy is that stress can be good for the body. And sometimes we want to tap into that good stress. I mean, there's such a thing, right? Yeah, there's, so there is. There's good stress and bad stress or chronic stress and acute stress. So something like high intensity interval training, an uh, ice bath, a sauna. These are all what we call like hormesis or good stress. And this is where we are strengthening the strong mitochondria, which is the energy center of our cells. And we're killing off the weak mitochondria. And so we, we sometimes want the body to go into that extreme, like let me run as fast as I can because we used to need to outrun the tiger or let me lift heavy things. And so it's good for the body to be pushed to its max, but not all the time. So when I talk about stress, I'm usually referring to chronic stress, like not sleeping enough, eating food that isn't food, not having enough sunlight, flight, you know, looking at a computer screen all day. This chronic stress is what builds up over time. And this is where the type of breath work and the meditation that I do at Ziva becomes so effective because you're giving your body this deep healing rest, which starts to melt away all of the accumulated stress in our cellular memory. Emily, I have to ask, you're so darn good at this. I mean, how did you get into it? Well, I used to be a Broadway performer. I used to sing and dance and act on Broadway. So that's actually where I started learning about breath work. I started singing and dancing when I was eight years old. And to be able to dance, to be able to sing, that's all the breath. Acting even is really your breath. And so I've been doing this stuff, not consciously, not with an idea of, oh, I'll share this with the world to help them be less stressed but as a way to perform at the top of my game. And so then when I found meditation, so I was on Broadway for 10 years, singing, dancing, acting. My last Broadway show was a chorus line mm -hmm. where my job was to understudy three of the lead roles. So imagine showing up to your job and having no idea which character you're gonna play that <laughs> night. Imagine them switching you from one character to another or saying, Emily Fletcher, we need you on stage and going into full-blown fight or flight, full-blown adrenaline and cortisol in the body. And that led to insomnia. I couldn't sleep through the night for 18 months. I started going gray at 27 years old. I couldn't sing. I couldn't dance. I was miserable. So here I am on Broadway doing the thing I had wanted to do since I was a child and I'm miserable. And thankfully I found meditation. I found breath work and it changed everything. The first day of my first meditation class, I slept through the night for the first time in 18 months. And I have every night since, and that was 12 years ago. I didn't get sick for eight and a half years. I stopped going gray. I'm 42 now. I have like two gray hairs. It was legitimately going gray in my 20s. And, and then my whole life got better. And so I thought, why does everyone not do this? So I left Broadway. I went to India. I trained for three years to be a teacher. And then since graduating, I've taught over 50,000 people now how to meditate on their own. And it feels like such a blessing. My book, my first book that came out has been translated into 14 languages. And so you can tell that we're living in a time where people are like, oh, I'm ready to go inside. I don't want to be stressed anymore. I don't want to caffeinate myself all day and drink myself to sleep at night anymore. I want to wake up this internal pharmacy that I already have inside. You really have to go in hard and deep to get the work done, right? Like you really in, went inside with the breath work, with yoga, with all of that. And now look at your life. You're, you're mm. transforming. Mm. I mean, one of the best compliments I've ever gotten was from a friend. Um, I was 
it was the last show I ever did. And there was some young girls and they were a little like, like looking up to me. You could tell they were admiring me. And this friend had been a friend for 15 years. And he said, Emily has not always been like this. <laughs> and I took it as high praise because he had seen the evolution. He had seen the self-love. He had seen the commitment that I had made to myself and the transformation that that had produced in my life. Now I'd love to show you the balancing breath. Yes. Okay, so balancing breath is really good for balancing the right and left hemispheres of the brain. And it's cool because you can do it fast if you wanna energize yourself, and you can do it slow if you wanna calm down or you know prepare for a performance. Oh. So we can take our right hand, we'll take our thumb and our ring finger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna close your right nostril with your thumb. Uh oh, you're gonna make me do things like this. I you? know, we're gonna look a little okay. silly, but I'm sure there's only a few hundred thousand people watching. <laughs> Okay, so close your right nostril with your thumb. Exhale through your left. Really good. Now inhale through the left nostril. Beautiful. Now close your left nostril with your ring finger and exhale through your right nostril. Excellent. Inhale through the right. So stay on the same side. Inhale through the right. There you go. All the way to the top. And now switch sides. Close your right nostril with your thumb and exhale through the left. You're doing awesome. We're gonna do the pattern a few more times. Inhale through the left. When you get to the top of the inhale, one more sip of air, and then closing the left nostril with your ring finger and exhaling through the right, all the way to empty, letting your shoulders soften, really good. You can close the eyes if you haven't already, inhaling through the left. Imagine this breath and energy coming into the base of the spine, traveling up the spine and then switching sides, closing the left nostril with the ring finger and exhaling through the right nostril. This time imagining sending that breath and energy right out through the middle of your forehead. Beautiful. And you can drop your hands into your lap, keep the eyes closed and just checking in, just noticing how you feel. When we do this balancing breath, we're closing the right and left nostrils, which helps to activate the right and left hemispheres of the brain. So we're letting the creative and the critical minds talk to each other, the masculine and the feminine sides talk to each other. And we're also de-exciting the metabolic rate, which is the rate with which the body consumes oxygen. So this is a beautiful way to oxygenate your blood, your organs, and to prepare for meditation. So just checking in, noticing how you feel. And when you're ready, you can start to open your eyes. And I'll give you one adaptation you can do with the balancing breath. So what we just did was slow, which is really good at calming everything down, preparing for meditation, preparing for performance. But we can also do this balancing breath fast. And that's if you can't get to your afternoon coffee, you don't have time for your afternoon meditation, you're going bleary eyed at the computer and you just need to pick me up. You wanna wake everything up. You can do the exact same thing we just did, but we speed it up. So I'll let you see it once. Mm -hmm. um, so what we were doing is simply out, in, out, in out, in, out, in, and switching back and forth. So now we're gonna speed that up and it looks like this. Out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in. You got it, look at her go. This is actually fun. It's kind of fun, right? You can do a little dance moves, those are extra credit. <laughs> and you do a little rhythm, you can beatbox. This is what happens when you do breath work. You end up having all this bliss chemistry in your body and I you feel, feel so much better. I definitely feel bliss. Great. Is there anything that anyone needs to know about breath work that may be contra a contraindication to any part of life? Yeah, so this is pretty powerful medicine. And so just like if you were gonna start a powerful medicine program, you would wanna consult your doctor. You wanna make sure that you are healthy, that it works for your nervous system. And you know, some of this stuff can actually be psychotropic. Some of this can yes. move you into psychedelic states of consciousness. And like, like you said earlier, this can even be used for trauma release. And so if you have a lot of trauma stored in your body and you start doing intensive breath work without any guidance, without any support, that can be dangerous, right? So you wanna make sure that you're starting slowly, that you have the support that you need, and that you are building up slowly and that you have an integration program on the other side. And one of the things I want to point out, and I tell people that come to me about eating patterns and wanting to change their, their lifestyle with eating, a lot of times when you dig in and you sit down next to them, you find that they're eating their traumas yes. and they have to really you know, open up these traumas. So I want anyone who feels like, you know, I'm an emotional eater 
I feel like this could be really helpful. Yes, and with the right guidance and with the right tool for you, it can be very profound. You can heal and unlock trauma, maybe not just from your lifetime, but possibly even previous Beyond. generations that we've inherited epigenetically. I just have to tell you, this has been absolutely amazing. I've learned so much. Thank you so much for always, always opening up your heart to me and now opening up your center to me and all your knowledge. So appreciated. It is such an honor. Thank you for your body of work and thank you for bringing the joy of breathwork and meditation to so many people. Mm, my pleasure. This is a section in Digging In that I like to call Dig It or Ditch It. And when it comes to breathwork, I definitely dig it. And here's why. I have used breath work for years, all throughout my career actually, to help my body relax, to help my mind relax, so I can go and perform to my best ability. And it's worked for me for years. And also, whenever I'm in a time where I feel any stress or anxiety, breath work is what I go to. I tap into breath work to calm myself down. But here's the best part about breath work. It's science backed. When it comes to breath work, there's science that shows us it can actually lower your blood pressure and reduce stress and anxiety. This is a, one of the core principles of ancestral medicine. And I always have such a fondness and love for anything that's ancestral because it stands the test of time. It's, it's shown us that it's worked historically. Okay, so I give breath work a big thumbs up. Just make sure that you study with an experienced practitioner and Play around a little bit. Find the breath work that works best for you and have fun with it. Thank you for watching this episode of Digging In. Until next time.